Welcome back. It's uh, one of the stories that's getting us talking this morning. Mum of four, Shona Sibbery, has confessed to sedating her children to subdue them on long-haul flights. She says it's perfectly acceptable and it's kinder to other passengers. But Mum of one, Sonia Poulton, says it's lazy parenting and it's tantamount to child abuse. They join us now along with Dr John T. Welcome to both of you. Um, so now let's start with you first of all. You're a mother of four. You've got family in Fiji. So this yes. is where this began because you had an awful long flight. I think it's like 28 It's hellish. Hours. It's, it's literally the furthest place from the UK that you can fly. It's, it's the opposite side of the world. <laughs> and the first time that you were travelling on your own, you were five months pregnant. How old were the other three? At 16 the time? months old and three and a half. And three and a half. Okay. And so this was back in 2002. It was actually another mother that told you about this. It was because she had family in Australia and she recommended it to me because I just said, how am I going to manage to do this? There's only so much snap that a mother can play on an aeroplane. And I'm not talking about sedating 10-year-olds on a charter flight to Spain. I'm mm. talking about those really long-haul journeys that take days. And it's in an unnatural environment, in an aluminium tube at 37,000 feet. And frankly, adults find that a stressful environment to be in. And it's unfair on a child. I mean, some people would argue it's unfair on a child to take them on a trip that far. But in this day and age with families spread all over the world, some people have to travel those distances with very young children. And I think in those cases, it's an acceptable, sensible thing to do. And you say that it's, um, you sort of had other passengers in mind as well, the fact that your children could be crying or having a tantrum and it wouldn't be fair on them. Well, that's right. And in the article I wrote today in the Daily Mail, a, a survey shows that, in fact, one thing that passengers find even more irritating than a crying child on a plane is a mother that does absolutely nothing about it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we can all be virtuous and smug and say, oh, yes, you know, you can play and draw and all that kind of thing with your child on a plane but a 16 month old two and a half year old a three and three year old there is a limit to their attention span and you know they're going to get fed up with with doing stuff like that and it will be a strain on the people sitting around them you were saying you said there uh, at the beginning of, uh, of our conversation you know i'm not talking about drugging a 10 year old on a flight to spain what you are talking about is drugging a two and a half year old though I'm talking about sedating a two and a half year old with drugging, sedating, an over-the-counter antihistamine. So if it was sold over the counter and you can buy it to sedate your child at night at home, why? what difference does it make where you're doing it or why you're doing isn't it? It's it, obviously safe if they're selling this it over the, the counter. The, the, the sleep side of things is a side effect of this particular drug. You don't buy it to sedate your children, you buy it because it's a, an antihistamine and the side effect is that it makes them sleepy. Well, that's right. So, what, but what's wrong with that? Well, that you're, you, you're using it for something for which it wasn't intended. Well, I don't know, you know, because GPs have said in the past to me that it's absolutely fine. And in fact, back in the day, you know, my mother used to go to the GP before long flights and get, and actually GPs would say, that's fine, give, give her, you know, some cough medicine that helps her sleep or an antihistamine. I mean, I have family that have worked as, as cabin crew on airlines and, you know, 20 years ago, they would remove the baby, take it back to the galley, stick its dummy in a bottle of whiskey and hand it back to the mother. You know, I just think we're all getting kind of worked up about something. Sonia, we're all getting worked up here. All this is, this is a case of being thoughtful and mindful mm. of other passengers. Mm. It can be bought over the counter. Mm. It doesn't do any harm. Mm. Why not? put your children to sleep on a long flight. Well, first of all, this is all about everybody else except the baby. So it's about the passengers, it's about the parents' comfort, it's about everybody except the baby. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, is I've looked into the ingredients in these products and there is there, there, are, there are some elements about them that frighten me. When you see, you know, a side effect being sudden death, that, that's a little bit worrying. Obviously, there are issues about, which I'm sure the good doctor here is going to tell us more about, but there are issues about fluid on the brain, certainly in a child so young being sedated, drugged, whichever you find more acceptable to describe it as. But you know, to, to say, well we used to do this with our children, this is what our mothers used to do. Well, you know, I read your article and it was actually the, the, the one doctor that you had was, was, was comparing it to a, giving children opium well what kind of comparison is that I mean you know I, I really I don't want us to be a sedation nation and that is what we're doing we're sedating children when in fact we should just let them be and we're it's talking fact, about one-off on, I, I listen to you ever haul. so long so you've got to give me some breathing space now but the fact is is that children will naturally sleep on a long flight they naturally will that's just a fact and of course What's the longest flight you've been but, on but, with but, your, but, your but child that is the issue because well, the point is is I am not the kind of mother who would sedate my child in that way I simply would not do it what I would you do then if you're if you've got a young child two years old yeah um, they're, they're, well, and, we know what and other like children on. as well uh, i wouldn't have taken that length of a flight i simply you wouldn't, wouldn't have if you have family uh, in the southern hemisphere that you that i would have still waited until it was more appropriate time you said you were pregnant you had a what a three-year-old and a, 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 a two. yes because 
otherwise you don't see their, you know, the grandparents don't get to see their grandchildren growing up. Well, and so why can't they come visit you? I, I think, think that's but, worse. But well, they, again, they do, but, you but see, I think again, that's worse. It's everybody than, else except the baby. You're well, no, it is because else children the baby. get distressed on flights too. Yes, they and do, but actually, that's still I think no, that's far still, kinder to it's them. It's still no solution to sedate them. No, it's not far kinder. That's what you no, tell yourself to make yourself feel better about it. Did you research these things before you cited it? You can buy it over the counter. Did you look at just discussing those side effects? We'll come to Johnny in just a moment. Did you look at those side effects? Did you think, right, okay, I, I'm on a flight to Fiji. I'll give my child this sedation. The recommended if they, dosage. It, recommended dosage. If they have a reaction to this, I am at 37,000 mm. feet and there isn't a hospital nearby. I did think that, but I weighed up the risks and I, and I made a decision based what I feel on common sense in as much as if you can give a child this and it, you know a doctor's quite happy for you to give it to a child at home and but you know, parents be, could be doing but it you'd be on evening. the ground and close to a hospital well yes of course but i think problem. if something's that risky they're not going to be selling it over the counter well let's, the let's find out let's find out dr john tell us i mean is this should you be using drugs for <laughs> So, so um, this is uh, the, the drugs we're talking about are licensed actually not for children under two, but over two. They are licensed, but obviously they're licensed for specific conditions. Um, they're not licensed, and there isn't research and evidence around using them in healthy children on flights. So, so that is something I think we've got to be a, a little bit wary of. All drugs have side effects. For the most part, uh, the side effects associated with these drugs are quite mild. Although, interestingly, one of the most significant side effects is that it can cause uh, hyperactivity and overexcitement in children. Mm -hmm. So wow. you, you could potentially end up with a child um, kind of creating havoc um, on, on an aeroplane. Mm. So I think, you know, as a doctor, I wouldn't prescribe it for this. Um, equally, we know parents are taking these sort of drugs. So I think the advice I would always give is absolutely don't try it for the first time when you're in, you know, when you're in the air. You need to be, if you do, if you are going to do this, making sure that your child tries this perhaps a weekend before you before you go away or something like that to be to be safe. But actually, we wouldn't prescribe it unless the um, the benefits outweighed the risk. So if you've got a child who's distressed or in discomfort, then obviously potentially the benefits of helping a child to calm down, you would give a prescription would medication. Would you recommend? that you sedate a healthy child for the sake of the other passengers and the ease of the parents on a long flight? I, I couldn't recommend that as a doctor mm. because, because my, my, I, I would always be focused on the child. For, for me, the decision is about the welfare of the child, not of other passengers or of parents. So oh, in yeah. terms of, of, the, of the child, you would have to think about whether the, the benefits to that particular child outweighed the risks to that particular child. I yeah. don't know if either of you have ever travelled a very long distance. I, I, more I, than I one did child, but I, I did think a ten hour and walked Harry up and down for ten hours. Not at one point did right. my bottom touch exactly. that seat and it was horrendous. Exactly. And this but is also about our that. attitudes. And this is about our attitudes. This is a whole thing that children should be on. seen and not heard. No, 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 no. That's not what this article, is about. At the end of your article you actually say that you'll go on a trip to Cornwall and sedate them. So this is not about long haul flights. I was saying I will take a bottle in case we get my children are all much older now and I don't need to. Stands. What I'm talking about is the window between a child being one, and I know you can't sedate a child that's under two on an airline, but in fact, I think until the aircraft industry do more to help mothers on planes with a child, most parents with a one-year-old won't buy a full paying seat for their child. They're, that child is too big to go in a bassinet. They're not a okay. baby anymore. Then that, so you have a child on your, no, that's that, a completely this different is the issue. issue. No. You have a child no. wriggling and uncomfortable on your lap between the age of about one and three and a half. Until you, well, when well you two, can't you can, sedate one under two, so one, one you should. Well, no, be doing you can't. But place. I would argue that actually, between the ages of one and two, that's when they most need some Were help. Were your children on ever awake? On, a, on our 28 hour flights, oh yes. Well, what, you, said, no, so you said at the end of that article that you would sedate them, you'd take the bottle just in case on a trip to Cornwall. I was being, I was being a little bit flippant. You wrote that was it. Yes, you yes, did write it, thing. exactly. And Quite that I acknowledged, and I just thought, no, that's actually outrageous. What it's I about your parenting. That's what we're talking about. What yeah. I said it's was that I would take a bottle parenting. in case we got stuck for a long time but in you know the what? car. But, you know, there's antihistamines are also... The antihistamine is also there for travel sickness, too. So, in fact, it's perfectly reasonable to take it in the car. That's why you're sedating your child. So, what do you do, then? Do you never tap when you're on a plane and you've got children that are screaming, you think, oh, there must be something you can do? No, I certainly don't. 
know. And do you know why? Because not only did I have a small child once myself, but I was small myself too. We have to look at our attitudes as, as people. We have to let children be. Stop sedating them. Stop turning them into sort of dummies to be seen and not heard. And that's what this is I about. I think you're being Just let them be. overreacting. And I think that's... I don't understand. You're the one who's sedating your child. Yes, I'm I don't the one who's sedating my with child. With an over-the-counter anti-histamine so over that plenty of mothers give their children, children within Sorry. their own bedrooms. And I don't understand this sort of... There seems to be a band, a band of mothers that just feel the go. martyrdom. Let's just be really smart because we've done it the really, really no, hard not way. At all. There is an not easier way to I do understand. these things and it's I more understand. considerate on the passengers no. around you. Forget the and other do you know passengers. what you might get off this way? We're all talking over each other. You can have a final you can have a final word each. Final word. I would love to be knocked out for a 28 hour flight myself. I think it's a really horrible environment to be in. Last word. It, it's outrageous. Don't sedate your children. You know, learn about challenging behaviour. John T, sensible word at the end. I, I would simply come down to the point I've already made, which is about this is about the child. So always make a decision based on the best interests of your child. Hallelujah. Let's just have a little look at our. We did a poll, um, and the results were as follows: one in five mums and dads would resort to medication to sedate a child yeah. on a flight. Yes. One in five. <gasps> Thank you very much Thank indeed. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Fascinating to know what, uh, what you've got to say about it this. It really is. Well, Dr. Jonty's advice can be found on our website. Before taking or administering any medication, you should seek advice from your GP or medical health professional. And well, we'll get some of your comments now. We've already had two and a half thousand comments on this subject and they are still flying in. Uh, Susie Arm says, I have four children. I've never done it, but if necessary, I would. I'm not ashamed, just a mum in the real world. Uh, Michelle Gummett says, no, what if there was an emergency landing or even worse, a plane crash and you have to get yourself and sedated child out? That's just insane. How can anyone justify drugging their children? And Sarah Moore says, for all those up in arms about it, ask yourselves this, have you ever given the parents of a child on a flight a dirty look or made nasty comments if we were all more accepting and understanding of kids and babies on flights then parents wouldn't feel the need to sedate their children please keep them coming in we'll be back soon thank you very much. looking thank at my you. twitter feed here there's a lot of people suggesting that we sedate both of you oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame them. <laughs> thank you very much indeed right